In this video, I'll be talking about model patching, a new framework for creating robust machine learning models using learned data augmentations. In typical machine learning pipelines, we want to use some data to train a predictive model. Ideally, the model will succeed when it is deployed. In this example, we want this skin cancer classifier to make correct predictions for new patients. In reality, models can perform well on average, but may not be robust. For skin cancer, a doctor looking closely at the model's performance on the no cancer class may find that the model only does well on examples with bandages. Here, there's a large performance gap for examples without bandages, maybe because the model has previously associated the presence of bandages with healthy patients. This performance gap, which we term the subgroup performance gap, exemplifies the model's lack of robustness. Our goal in this work is to fix this bug in the model making models that have a subgroup performance gap more robust. We've seen that a class, such as no cancer, might be split into a subgroup for bandages, one for no bandages, and maybe others as well. We'll assume that each class is partitioned into one or more subgroups that are known to us. In the skin cancer example, our model should ideally learn to ignore the bandage, relying only on the skin lesion to make its prediction. More generally, we want that features unique to a particular subgroup should not be used by our model at all. When making a prediction, the model constructs a feature representation for the example. The amount of subgroup information that is present in this feature representation can be quantified by mutual information. The mutual information between the subgroup and representation given the class tells us whether the representation contains any subgroup information. If we successfully minimize this mutual information quantity, the representation will carry no subgroup information and will be invariant to the subgroup. In fact, our work shows that you can get this type of invariance for free by introducing an even stronger notion of invariance called the coupling invariance. Consider any example in the dataset. It belongs to a class and subgroup, one in this case. We ask a simple question, what would this example look like if it was in subgroup two instead. This is an imagined version of this example that would lie in subgroup two. We can pose the same question for the other subgroups inside this class as well. We call this set of examples containing the original and its imagined counterparts a coupling. Concretely, we could take a no cancer image containing a bandage and ask what its counterpart in the no bandages subgroup would be. We can imagine something like this which is the same image with the bandage removed. Using this idea of a coupling, we define a new mutual information quantity. Instead of just conditioning on the class, we additionally condition on the coupling that an example belongs to in this mutual information term. This gives us a stronger invariance guarantee. Model patching is a two-stage framework that provably optimizes an upper bound on this new mutual information objective. In its first stage, we learn a generative model that can imagine what an example would look like if it belonged to a different subgroup. This generative model can be used for data augmentation, augmenting an example by generating its coupling. In the second stage, we train a classifier using this augmentation. For any example, we generate its coupling and then enforce that the output of the model on all of the examples in this coupling should be consistent. Across both benchmark and real-world clinical datasets, model patching improves robust accuracy and decreases the subgroup performance gap significantly. We're excited about using model patching in a real workflow, where the model is patched continuously as new bugs in the model are discovered. Thanks for listening to this talk. Get in touch with us if you're interested to learn more, and be sure to check out our blog post on the Hazy blog.